Next, we go to Michael from the Richmond Times Dispatch. Hey, Michael. Hello, Senator. How are you? Good. Okay, I have a political question, but it doesn't have to do with your campaign. Okay, uh, I still to... may I still may have limited ability to really be political, but anyway. Yeah, my question is, given the crowded fields and the primaries uh, for Congress next week, and including the Republican primary for Senate to a less, somewhat lesser degree, you know, what do you think about Virginia uh, allowing a rank choice? Vote? Oh, okay. More or less. Yeah. yeah. And actually, though, that's poli- that's policy, not politics. So I'm I'm fully able to talk about that. Um, you know, I, I'm following, Michael, I'm following this debate with some interest, you know, by looking at other states experience with ranked choice voting, Alaska, uh, Maine. Uh, there are a number of states that have it. I, I haven't yet, for example, signed on to a, a ranked choice voting bill. Um, and I do think it would end up really being a matter for the General Assembly, not for us. I, you know, I, I am a co-sponsor of a number of voting rights bills dealing with redistricting reform and, and early vote kind of building upon the, the Voting Rights Act of 1965. But I haven't signed on to rank choice voting bills yet. I'm not, you know, opposed. I'm not yet a supporter only because I'm, I'm kind of trying to look at it and see how it works. And I've heard, you know, look, I've heard good arguments made for ranked choice voting, especially when there are multiple candidates. Um, But I've also heard from traditionally underrepresented groups in Congress or other legislative bodies who think it might uh, harm their ability to be successful. So I I need to do more due diligence before I have an opinion about whether Virginia should embrace ranked choice voting as a state matter.